All right. So one of the topics that sometimes gets requested a lot uh, from the ePlan consulting perspective is revision control. So let's talk about some of the techniques for um, this topic. Okay. So in ePlan, we have two types of revisioning. We have change tracking and project comparison, or property comparison, we should say. Um, when you're doing this type of comparison, it's basically you have an older version of this current project you're working in, and you want to compare um, two states. What I will be doing is the other type, which is called change tracking. Okay. So this is more of an active, active revision control. So let's say I have this uh, project at a good state. Obviously, there's not a whole lot going on here. But let's say that um, I have a project where I want to submit it in for approval and uh, get some feedback. Okay. So the first step we generally want to take is complete the project. What this does, it puts it in a right protected state. And it will not allow you to make any changes, of course, until you add a revision to it. So the first thing we'll do is do that. So we'll go up here to File revision control and complete the project. Now you'll see that everything is grayed out. I cannot move anything if I try to right right click, move. Of course, all the, of the right items are um, grayed out, so I cannot paste, move, or anything like that. We cannot even edit the properties of the device. Everything is grayed out. Okay? So, once we get some feedback from perhaps our manager, from one of our other colleagues, where we need to add or change some things, we need to now generate a revision. Okay, so I'll go and now generate the revision. Um, we could have just generated the revision before doing the completion, but the completion gives us one benefit. It allows an archive of the project to be generated automatically. If we generate the revision without completing it first, it just keeps the status of the project ongoing, and we do not get an archive state of the completed project. And I'll show that in a moment. So now I will generate the revision. We'll call it revision one. I'll just say first round of changes. OK. Now you'll notice everything comes back where it's not grayed out. We can now add different things to our project. OK, so I'm going to go ahead, and I will add Transformer. And I will add a power supply. Oops, drag that in. Change my variant and there. Okay, so now I've added some things and obviously we have a few new things going on here. We have some markers on our different devices and we have this big draft watermark. So before I talk about how to affect the, the way these things look, let's talk about that um, revision state of the project and the completed project backup. So I'm going to open up the projects folder and I'm going to go back one level. We'll sort by date modified. So if we go all the way to the top, you'll see this revision control demo.ell. This is the active project, and now it's in this revision state. Uh, you'll notice, however, we have this completed project.elr, rev1. So that's the benefit of completing the project before you generate a revision. It will automatically make sure that completed project gets stored um, sort of as an archive. Whereas if we just generate a revision without the completed step, we don't receive that archived project. So this is a way to sort of protect yourself if you need to revert back to an older um, state of the project, okay? And by the way, if you don't have these, op these options here, um, the open project folder, open doc, or open images, you can load the script to get those options by going to File, Extras, and um, Extensions Interfaces, Scripts Load, and it's this page navy context menu open folder. It should come with every install of ePlan. So just go to your normal scripts folder and you'll find this script. Okay. So now I want to change the way that this these different things look. So I don't want these uh, markers to be square and I don't want so many of them. I want them to be uh, clouds. So this will be in the project settings. We'll go down to management and revision graphical representation, and we'll change added to a cloud. 
And I'm going to uncheck this thing that says mark groups with display on element. Basically what that means is if you have um, a group inside of ePlan, if that's checked, every individual item of the group will have its own marker. Whereas if it's unchecked, we'll receive one big marker. So in my opinion, it's going to look much cleaner if we just have that unchecked. I'll leave this. Oh no, we'll change that to a cloud, excuse me. Okay, and now hit OK and you'll see we've cleaned it up a bit. We don't have so many markers um, because of course this device here is a macro, but everything is grouped. If I hold shift, I can select the individual items. But obviously, if you have a marker around every individual item, it's not going to look very um, clean. Okay. We can also change the draft watermark text by going back to the settings. In this case, we'll go to the change tracking settings. I can change this watermark text to revision, something like that. Okay. All right, so next, let's say that we, we've we made all of our changes and we feel good about the progress of the project. We want to resubmit it in for approval. So now what we're going to do is complete the pages. What this will do is it'll put a revision index into the page properties, and it will clear this, um, this watermark for us. So I'll go back to File, Revision Control, and complete pages. It's going to ask about the revision index. I'll put one, add a transformer, power supply, reason for change, request from customer. All right, and we have this checkbox update when completing pages. Uh, this will actually generate and update the reports. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, now we have a few different things in our project. We have all of the new reports. And you'll notice on the plot frame here, we have the marker from that revision index. Okay, so one thing to note is typically this, you only have an index get added to pages that were actually changed from the last revision state. Okay, if you wanted that to be project wide and you want every page to get indexed, you have to add here under always complete, you would have to add the different page types that you want to get completed. So obviously schematic multi lines, probably the most common, single line, overview, and so on. But typically it's only pages that were actually changed. Okay, and then we can go back to revision control and edit revision data. This will allow us to extend the data if we wanted to add these other two items, approved by and approved date. Here we have the complete revision history. So I can say this was approved by me, put my initials and I'll just copy that cell, highlight the rest and paste, control C, control V and we can add the date and do the same thing, copy and paste. Okay, so obviously that's a lot of data in the revision history. We don't really have room to put the extensive data in the plot frame here. So that's what the revision overview is for. And we have this report here and to turn off those markers, I'll just go to view and then turn the revision markers off. Okay, so here we have a more extensive history of the revision. Okay, and it, you basically just repeat the process. So if we wanted to generate another revision, revision two, we can certainly do that. If you wanted to complete this before doing that, remember that will help us archive the status. So I can complete it again. Um, when you complete the project, it's naturally, it wants to complete pages as well. So it'll add another index. Okay. So now we've completed it, and now we can generate another revision. Okay. And we can continue adding things as well. Let's say I want to add maybe our ground bus bar. Of course, our markers are hidden, so we'd have to turn those back on. Right, and then we can, of course, complete the pages again. Okay, 
we'll just leave this as index two. And of course, if we go to our revision history, we should now see revision two, revision one, all right? So I hope that gives um, a little overview of the revision capabilities with an ePlan. Um, if you have extensive questions or need deeper help, you can of course contact your uh, local ePlan account manager to set up some training or consulting.